ever elusive morel. They're everywhere and nowhere at the same point in time. We're out here today trying to find these elusive mushrooms. Why? Because they're delicious. And they also go for about 50 bucks a pound at your local farmer's market. So you wanna make sure that you're trying to find your own. So what do we look for when we're trying to find morels? A good site is one that has a water source. There's a creek over here to my right. And it also has a slope right above it, a little hill. The reason this is good is that as spores release, the water washes everything downhill, and it settles out into this nice flat area here that we're looking for. Um, this you know, helps the spores to settle in and create a little colony, so to speak. Now, what is a good time to find morels? In our area, it's the end of April to the beginning of May. This has been a particularly cold year, um, so this is the early part of May here. You, can, you know when they're ready, when these May apples, it's this green plant here, the tops start to flatten out a little bit. Other things is the trees are just starting to bud. You've got small little leaves on them. Uh, so you know it's about ready and it, you wanna make sure that you come a couple of days after a good heavy rain. Why? Because mushrooms love moisture. So we're gonna start looking here and we're gonna be looking under these May apples and hopefully we'll find some and then we're gonna make a delicious venison dinner with them. A couple of safety tips. While you're out foraging, make sure that you cover up, ticks are no joke. Uh, bring bug spray, I forgot to, and there are black flies eating me alive at the moment. So bring bug, bug spray, bring sunscreen if, if you don't wear long clothes. Um, also be on the lookout for snakes. Uh, it's that time of year when they're starting to come out. And also, if you're not sure if it's a morel or not, guys, don't eat it. It's just any, if you forage anything, don't put it in your mouth until you are 100% sure of your identification. Sites to find morels are going to vary. You want to make sure if you're on private land that you have the permission of the landowner. Uh, if you're on public land, say a state park, you want to make sure that your park and or your state park or county's regulations allow for foraging. So always check the rules and regulations before you come to visit. This is actually a public recreation area where it is um, open use for foraging. The tools that you need to go foraging for uh, morels are fairly simple. You just need a mesh bag or a basket. Um, people say this helps the spores drop. I don't know if that's true, but I can tell you, you put them in a plastic bag, your mushrooms get mushy. So you want something that allows your mushrooms to breathe, and then you just need a knife. Knife in a bag and some good hiking boots. That's all you need to get started on your way to make a gourmet meal. Okay, folks, this is what we have been looking for. I've been scouring the woods now for probably a few hours. Um, as you can see, they blend in very well with the leaves. This is a yellow morel. So we're gonna come up here and just go ahead and cut this. Now you can see on the inside of this, um, it's got a kind of pitted head. It's got a pitted head. And the inside of this is hollow. So I'm gonna cut this actually in half real quick. And I wanna show you the inside chamber of the head. So as you can see, the inside of this mushroom is completely hollow. So you've got the pitted head, the chamber inside's hollow, and so is the stalk. Now if this were a false morel, this inside chambered would be kind of covered in, in webbing, and in this case it's not, so we're good to go. This is a yummy, licious yellow morel to eat. So as you can see here, we have a different kind of morel. This one's a little bit darker, also does a very good job of blending in uh, with all this leaf clutter here. So we're going to go ahead and just cut him from the, from the base. Now you can see this beautiful pitted cap here and this nice hollow stem. This guy is going to taste amazing with some venison. Hey guys, so you just saw how to find morels, where to look for them, what they look like, and how to harvest them. Now comes the best part, and that's eating them. So what better way to eat wild mushrooms than with some wild game? We've got some beautiful venison backstraps, and we're gonna make a simple weeknight dinner of venison backstraps with a morel mushroom sauce and honey dill carrots. So the very first thing when you're making this meal, the most important thing is that your venison is room temperature. If you try to make this with 
you know, just out of the fridge or just out of the freezer venison, it's not going to work very well. So make sure your venison is room temperature. The next important thing is your thick, heavy cast iron pan for the venison. This is going to sear just like you would with like a filet mignon or New York strip steak. So first we want to get this heated up. And the second most important thing when you're cooking venison is it's very lean. So you want to make sure that you cook it with fat. This is a mixture of duck fat and bacon fat. If you don't have duck fat, you want to make sure that you use an oil um, that has a very high smoking point. So something like a vegetable oil versus an olive oil. Uh, bacon fat, I mean bacon makes everything better, let's just face it. This is the pan for the mushrooms. Uh, we also have a little bit of bacon fat and some butter and we're going to go ahead and get this warmed up as well but on the lower temperature. So this is probably on six. We have an electric stove, I hate it, but whatever. Uh, we're going to get this warmed up almost to the smoking point. Uh, this is going to warm up until everything is melted and we're going to season our venison backstrap. So you look at these lovely, lovely backstraps here. Uh, this is off of a deer that Scott got earlier uh, in the fall. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to apply our seasoning mixture. This is essentially equal parts salt, pepper, chili powder, paprika, coffee grinds. And then there is a half a teaspoon in here. Um, I was using teaspoon measurements. There's a half a teaspoon in here of cinnamon and a pinch of cardamom. And it creates a nice kind of complementary flavor for the venison. Nice kind of earthy flavor. So we're going to season this up and we're going to pat this in. You want to get a good coating on it. And then we're going to flip it and do the same. So we flipped it, now we're going to do the other side. Liberally coat all of this and just make sure you pat it in real well so it doesn't fall off too much in the pan. One thing that is different from searing beef to searing venison is you're not going to get that sizzly brown, uh, real hard crust and you're not going to hear it crackle like you do with beef because of, again, the lack of fat. It is a very lean meat. And we can hear the oil now starting to heat up quite a bit. And I'm just going to wash my hands off real quick. This oil should be almost smoking by the time you put your meat into it. Um, a way that I like to test it is to throw in, you know, something like a small piece of an onion and see if it really starts to boil and bubble and it's not. So it still needs a couple more minutes before that, or about a minute or so before that gets hot enough to put your meat into. Okay. So right now this is hot enough to put in our meat. You don't want to overcrowd the pan, so we're going to start with the large one here. You can see it's almost smoking coming off the top of the pan. And you can hear it as the meat goes in. You don't want to overcrowd the pan too much. So if you don't have a large pan, do this in batches. There we go. I'm going to make sure there's some good circulation. Now this goes for about 90 seconds per side. That's it. See, you got a nice sear on that seasoning base. And the thinner your backstrap is, the less time you actually want to cook it for. You want to make sure that it's warmed through the center, but that it's not overdone. Okay, guys, so this is, I've taken a temperature here uh, with our thermometer. You want this to hit about an internal temperature of about 120 degrees. This one needed a minute or two more. Uh, these other two were thinner, so we're going to go ahead and remove them from the pan. So this has now reached 120 degrees. We're going to remove this one as well and let all of this rest for a good 15 minutes. And turn off the stove. Okay, so now we have our venison resting over in the corner. Uh, we're going to start making our morel sauce. So you can see we have our morels here. These are the ones that we picked uh, the other day. Um, we also have some uh, baby portabellas as well, just because we're feeding more people than I... I probably got... Mm, a dozen or so morels, but they were all very tiny because we had rain and then we went from winter at 45 degrees to August summer and 95 degrees for five days. So they all sprouted, but then we didn't get any rain and extreme heat, so they all started drying out. So we've had our butter and bacon fat melting here. We're going to go ahead and add, this is an onion and probably about four cloves of garlic. So 
Once we've added our onions and garlic, we're gonna add a little salt and a little pepper. Then we're gonna add in all of the mushrooms. And we also have a few sprigs of fresh rosemary and fresh thyme. And we're gonna toss these into the pan as well with a little more salt to draw the moisture out of the mushrooms. And we're gonna let this cook down until everything is sweated and starts to crisp up just a tiny bit. So while the mushrooms are cooking down here, we're going to prepare the honey glazed carrots. Super simple, I do it in the microwave. This is a one pound bag of pre-washed baby carrots. Just empty them in. We're gonna put a little hair of chicken stock, just enough to steam them. We're gonna add a big chunk of butter. Probably about a quarter stick there. A good squeeze of honey. And some dried dill. Probably about, this is probably a full teaspoon or so. So just mix it up. Put your lid on. And this is gonna go in the microwave for about four minutes. That's how long it takes in mine. It might vary in yours. Start with three and then do it in 30, 40 second bursts until everything is soft. So the vast majority of the liquid has been, kicked, has been uh, cooked off of our mushrooms. So we are going to deglaze with about a cup of red wine. It's a little more than a cup, but whatever. Now this is going to cook down until all of the wine or all of the alcohol has evaporated off. While the alcohol is cooking off, we're gonna go ahead and add a few juniper berries. If you've never tried these in a red wine sauce, they're actually very good. Uh, if you like sour broughton, it's one of the big ingredients in a sour broughton as well. So we're gonna add some juniper berries and a little more pepper. So now that most of the alcohol has been evaporated off, we're gonna go ahead and add our half and half in. And you can use heavy whipping cream as well. We're just gonna warm that through just a little bit. And I'm also going to add in a little bit of Parmesan cheese. We can turn our heat off. Mix all that up. And then you just wanna remove these large stems of herbs. So this has been resting for about 15 minutes. We completed our mushroom sauce and we also have our butter carrots in the microwave and those should be done. And then there you go guys. That is pretty much for me the perfect temperature because I don't like it super rare. So this is a perfect medium temperature for your venison. We're gonna go ahead and slice it to however thick you want. I like to do thin medallions. And now we're gonna plate it. So Megan's about to plate this and you can see that the hungry wolves are desperately waiting for something to fall. This is the story of my life whenever I cook, especially when I cook venison or I cook seafood. Man, these two do not leave me alone. So everyone, this is our final product. We have our morel mushroom sauce down on the bottom, some beautifully done uh, venison backstrap on top and some honey dilled carrots. It's gonna be amazing. Uh, we have already tried the venison actually and it's, it's really good. Uh, new spice rub this time and definitely do what I said because it came out probably the best venison backstrap that spice rub that I've made. If you like this guys, like us, subscribe, uh, comment if you think that there's something you would change in the recipe, share this with your friends. I hope you enjoy it. Dinner is waiting. Go and get it.